This is a Flotilla Friday call for October 29th, 2021. I was going to give a quick demo of a little. Um, I, I was, for the past couple hours, I've been working on harvesting this week's OGM call um, foolishly. And uh, and I, it's like one of those things. Uh, um, Eric Rangel asked this simple question, you know, at the end of the call, he put it in the chat. So how are we going to harvest this call and all this cool uh, chat stuff and notes and things? And, you know, and it sounds so simple. Um, I, I was smart enough at least to, to type in the chat, you know. So love to chat more about that, Eric. Uh, it turns out that it, it costs many hours to do this. Uh, it's not trivial. Um, and my, my headline, my, my wish is that we processed on the call and, and created an artifact during the call, yada, yada. So we've been through this before. So then afterwards, I'm like, Pete, why did you say many hours? It can't, it can't take more than like, you know, it's going to take more than real time, but it's, it's like two hours, you know, come on, don't be a famous open. last words. And so this morning I woke up and I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to open up the script. I was playing around with the script yesterday and I, I got, you know, some of the, the C, C legs again. So I'm like, I can do this in like an hour. I'm going to get something really beautiful and say, you know, I got, you know, I got halfway there. So anyway, an hour later with the script, freaking an hour later. Um, so here's let me let me uh, let me demo. Um, share screen. It's great being retired because I've spent like days trying to parse a text file from Noah. So like I'm not even worried about time. <laughs> um. So here's my descript, you know, it's all beautiful and wonderful. The script is lovely and fun. Um, they've got a cool thing called the correction wizard now, um, which these green words are things where it's like, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not sure. Let me, um, so it, it underlines a whole bunch of stuff and then lets you, so this is even slower now because I'm, I'm zooming and my computer's like memory is completely full. Anyway, I could start correction wizard here and it does this really cool thing where it just scrolls to the next green thing and it's, you know, about 60 70% of the time it's wrong and it's like a simple fix and you just type this in, instead of like kind of like highlighting and selecting and, you know, correcting, you just like get stepped through it. It's a wizard thing, you know, and you just type and hit return and then it goes to the next one. It plays a little context. It's beautiful, wonderful. If you haven't seen the script, by the way, the, the conceit is that um, uh, instead of timeline editing, like down here on the bottom, it's uh, it generates a transcript uh, and then presents it for you, lets you identify the speakers, yada, yada, it's beautiful. Wonderful, really a lovely thing. It gets clunkier and clunkier as the videos get longer and an hour and, and 12 minute video is less fun than a, a two minute video or a five minute video or a 10 minute video. But anyway, so so I, that was pretty good. Uh, it turns out the speaker identification on this video, I don't know why, um, just completely failed. It, it, it auto detected two different people and out of, instead of eight or nine and, and then it, Usually it does a good job of saying, okay, you know, I, I heard four different people. Let me play you like 20 different clips and you just type in the name for those 20 clips. And, um, and then I'll change everywhere I identified that voice. I'll change it through the whole transcript, right? I've got two voices and so it's a mess. I can't do the speaker identification. So I, I spent a couple of times cycling on that. So after an hour, after a freaking hour of Descript, fighting Descript, I got I got like six minutes of, of actual, one of the things you do, I don't, I don't, probably everybody's gone through this process when you're processing meat or you're processing tax or something like that, you have to go through several phases, but one of them is kind of like just the, you know, correcting kind of the syntax and spelling and stuff like that. And then the next level up, you can start to work on some meaning and the next level up, you can actually work on sense and stuff like that. So I have found it in the past to be helpful to kind of get the script going so that it knows who people are and, you know, it's kind of starting to be organized. I got five minutes. Nobody started talking about anything interesting, really. And then I kind of gave up after an hour. I got five minutes of, you know, kind of like put together. And there's some like, tricky stuff in here, you know, Magister Ludi or Vannevar Bush's Memex. These are all things that it guessed kind of right and kind of wrong. Teilhard Desjardins, um, uh, that one Desjardins. Three stops um, or two stops, I just checked. 
So, um, so after an hour, I kind of gave up on the script. It gave, gave up on improving the script. There's a lot of things that are going to be wrong in the transcript, which is, and, and the speaker identification wasn't there. So that makes me all sad. I spent about 20 minutes kind of reflecting on things. So, so then I'm like, you know, what this needs is a way to, like, in, instead of kind of like parsing, you know, line by line by line by line, <clears throat> if I kind of get myself familiarized with the hour and 15 minutes um, and with the chat, uh, trans no, with the uh, Zoom chat, then I can kind of pick out topics and pick out people and pick out books and things like that and make a map of that. So then I'm like, okay, where do I map that? Is it scalpel? Is it Miro? Is it um, whatever? And I'm like, you know, I'm pretty good at that in Obsidian now. Um, so I, I've got really good Obsidian muscles and I'm like, this is the way it should work. So what I did is I skimmed over the chat, the, the, the chat, the Zoom chat. Um, this particular uh, Zoom, this chat, we had, or, or in, in OGM calls, we're starting to get more discussion in the chat because the bandwidth isn't high enough um, for the topics um, in speech. Um, so some of it kind of leaks over and, and fills up the chat, which is kind of a good thing because then it's written up, right? Um, so what I did is I scrolled through the chat. Uh, this is uh, post-processed by Bentley's um, uh, formatter, so it's a little bit easier to read. So I just kind of scrolled through this looking for the highlights, and I mapped that into um, an OGM page. So I set up a new wiki. Um, this is either going to sound crazy or brilliant or probably both. Um, I'm starting to think that um, instead of one big wiki, Massive Wiki loves to make more wikis, right? Or it's easy to make more wikis. Instead of one big wiki with all the calls in it, what I'd rather have is one wiki for a call. So this sounds crazy, having a whole wiki for one call, right? Um, but it's actually kind of a good thing, I think. And then it, it scopes it really well. And then the some of these topics will start recurring. And what I would do is have a fleet of wikis, massive wikis, and then just drag over the files that I need where we've got a file already that describes whatever, you drag that over and pop it in, right? <clears throat> so I'm kind of okay with the fleet of, of wikis, even though that sounds crazy. I think that's gonna work out. Um, let me fix this while I'm looking at it. Um, uh, so then I've got another thing that I haven't been doing with wikis yet, um, I used to do this in old social text wikis. I, I used to put a prefix, um, topics colon, or person colon, or books colon. Um, and then I realized that I could actually use directories for that. So I don't like this, this um, absolute path thing, but you kind of need it. Um, but, but then um, I like the way this is working out and I can't quite describe the, the, the way I'm labeling. It's not quite labeling an edge, it's you know labeling a, labeling on a topic. Um, so anyway, so went through the, the chat, made this, made most of this, um, uh, topics, books, resources, people, uh, attendees. And then I can go back over the chat and I can go back over the Descript and start to fill things in, right? Oh, we were talking about computer lib. I guess I don't have anything there yet. Um, or we were talking about, um, uh, Leif Ed Edvinson's book, you know, so here's a page about that book and then you can start to fill that out, right, um, and so on and so forth. Um, I've gotten farther on, I've got a bug here, topic of topics. Um, I, I think I'm farthest on, on tour right now. Uh, so here's, uh, this was a little back and forth between Jerry and, uh, and Leif. And this is uh, me copying and pasting from Wikipedia. And I was able to clean these up a little bit. And now it's pretty nice looking, you know, this is going to turn into a, a pretty decent web page. Um, uh, I've also done a little bit with heroes. Uh, this is, you know, this is what somebody said on the call. And this is something I was able to copy and paste from the script over to here clean it up a little bit, start to link it. And, you know, it's starting to turn into um, a nice hypertext map of the call. Um, 
uh, at some point, I'm hoping that this will turn into, I haven't even tried this yet, so we'll see what happens if my computer can survive it. Um, um, so uh, these are going to start to, um, this is a, a, well, this is a work product thing here, but anyway, you'll start to see, you know, um, Leif talked uh, about Jerry when he was talking about mapping. Um, we'll get more and more of these linked together as I, I fill out the, the thing, right? Um, so uh, so I, I took an hour to do this and the hour of doing that, I got a nice list of topics. Um, I've got this, you know, a thing where I can start to fill in the links between all the topics and the different books and resources and people and stuff like that. I'm really liking this. So, um, so it sucked to have the Flotilla Friday call come up right, right when it was getting good. But I guess now this is top of mind and I can, uh, I can share it. Thanks for listening to me natter on about it. I think it's super cool that um, it's almost like chaptering the, the call because like when there's like, the call is in chronological like linear order of like a chat and topics that are discussed. But like, what if you're kind of like taking like, okay, this was a separate chunk that we could like expand upon further. And you're kind of like, all right, like branching them out and then making its own space to like continue working on that, which is really cool. Yep. Um, it also makes me think about the like architecture of, of, of wikis because it's like, well, how many layers down can you go? Um, like, cause like the fact that you were like, okay, I'm gonna make a, a whole wiki for this event. Like, should wikis just be like, no, like should, um, like if you have a graph database of just different wikis, yeah. <laughs> right? Where they're all like connected. That's kind of seems, that's like the logical thing for me. I don't know. Yeah, totally makes sense. Go for it, Mark Antoine. Well, I did, I did ask in the chat, but the problem with one wiki per is uh, per call is it makes it harder to draw connections, isn't it? Or is it how easy is it to do cross wiki it's, links and massive? It's, it's a it's a, a topic I know is coming up, and I'm kind of deferred it. My my current hack, um, the my thinking around the current hack is, um, I'm going to be promiscuous with with copying pages and I'm not even going to keep track of where it came from, right? So if there's a page about Tor or there's a page about the open innovation book or whatever, and it's in a different wiki I've got around, lying around or somebody else's wiki, I'm gonna just copy the page and put it. Later on, something, some, some magic AI thing is going to have um, kind of Vincent's map of, you know, a thousand wikis that Pete has <laughs> splattered all over the place and go, hey, Pete, I think this, you know, or whoever, you know, Pete's kid or, or one of you here, um, it looks like these three pages are, are related. Let me at least put a link, let me cross link the wikis. Um, uh, so I feel that's, that's I, right now I'm going to kind of scatter. I'm not gonna worry too much. I, I'm going to do a lot of duplicating and I'm not gonna even keep track of where the, where the parentage is. I, and I'm okay with that. Um, uh, FedWiki is doing probably a better job at this. FedWiki, you don't, you, 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 a lot of times you don't, don't even move the information one from one place to another, right? You just link into another wiki without even realizing it. The way it's set up, the pages just, you know, link between wikis, and they also link back to the the source better. It, it, it keeps the provenance. That I was, that's what I was trying to say. Yes. The, yeah. the thing is, when you do a copy in FedWiki, it remembers the provenance. Yeah. So that it's easy to trace the genealogy of the page and to trace the, and I think that's kind of fundamental. The, so there's two ways to do this, right? Uh, the, 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 the FedWiki model, which you're kind of following is, as you said, promiscuous copying, but with provenance, yep. which I think is, is brilliant. And the yep. other option is transclusion, yeah. which was, those are, I don't, I cannot think of another model, right? Well, the, yes, the third is of course that unification, the duplication, which is part of what we're trying to do with. Yeah, 
I, I like, um, I, I think, I haven't thought about it much. I guess I've thought about it a little bit. I, I'm pretty sure I like FedWiki's model better than Transclusion. Um, so I've been thinking about Transclusion since we started social text back in the day because it comes up really fast when you've got a wiki. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but um, I, the, the problem with Transclusion is that, or, or the, the solution that FedWiki has is that you, you fork the block, right? And then, um, I, I agree the provenance is really important and in massive wiki I'm not worrying about that yet because I because it's overhead that you know I want to I want to get lots of wikis before I figure out okay now let's try to organize them um, and I don't that's not a better way or a worse way or whatever it's just the way you know that's the, the that's the tools I've got right now um, I need to make the problem before I can start fixing the problem I don't want to fix the problem and not make you know, and not get into lots of making the problem. Um, so anyway, I think I fed wiki the that fork thing and it's you don't even think about forking it. You just do it without even realizing it. It's beautiful and wonderful. And it I is. love it. Um, the, 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 I see advantages to both transclusion and forking. Certainly, uh, transclusion is a bit like original transclusion is a bit rigid about this was the inviolable words of the original author yeah. and yeah kill the author i mean you want you're putting the thought in a new context and it needs to be adapted to its new context i do believe in the value of provenance highly 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 but um so yeah i i, I differ with you i certainly would not <laughs> create the problem before i have a solution <laughs> Um, I, uh, I so look forward to hyperknowledge because hyperknowledge would fix all of this, right? So yeah, uh, but not not so well a posteriori, but yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with that. I you know I'd make the problem and throw yeah. away all of that. I'm okay. I, I don't know. Or yeah, the, it, it's actually you know I, I I do a fair amount of uh, I, I do some genealogy research. My brother does uh, the history of handwriting, and so one of the things that we do is go back to original source material, and you go, oh well, I wish this were blah, you know, and it, it's not. So someday, at a hundred years in the future, you know, some somebody like one of us is going to be poking around. It's like crap. Why did people? make this terrible mess you know but also there's going to be a brain that that goes okay i kind of get the whole thing and and i can you know read i can i can make a better version of it that's all linked and whatever yeah. but, but, but more more seriously i think or more abstractly because i really for me that's a really interesting conversation the transclusion versus copying and adapting uh it's we're being nearly like these are the fundamental operations of hypertext right yeah, uh, it's. The, I mean, the advantage of, of transclusion, of course, is it's more than just keeping provenance. It's about having an updatable um, version of the original text, and that way, and, and and in a way, that's at the core of the hyper of the uh, hyper knowledge intuition, that if you if both systems are event based, you can say. I've transcluded this. I'm adapting it to my needs. So I'm in a way I made a copy. Thank you. Fedwiki yep. style. But I keep not only do I keep the provenance, I keep track of the events on the provenance. So I can do a kind of diff of here are the two versions and how they evolved. Yep. Uh, which again in a Git model makes a lot of sense, but the, 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 the Git keeps in a way too much. Like um, yeah. What you want is the, uh, here is the history of that file with this file, you know, with this git hash yeah. in many repositories. Yeah. But because it keeps also the directories and mixes the file and directory information, but does it mix it that much? I think they might be separate, in which case you could basically, you should be, you should be able to do a cross git query Give me all the files with that hash, wherever yeah. they're, they're in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious. Um, I would love to look, but I'm not going to get around to it. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> Git, Git is really interesting. Um, and uh, Yes. Um, Vincent? Anyway. Um, I think, oh, Wendy, did you want to go first, or did you? Uh, are you no longer available? 
Hi. No, I'm I'm good. I tried to lower my hand. I guess it didn't come down. Thank you. Oh, it did. I just was remembering that you raised yours first. <laughs> Thank you. That was sweet of you. Um, so I hope this isn't a tangential thought now. When I raised my hand, it was very um relevant. But I realized that um Pete in the the kind of like link chainsaw um widget. Uh, we're doing something wrong when it comes to like the source, which I like knew in the back of my mind that I it was kind of too difficult at the time. Um, I'm realizing that when you add a link, so it's great having this like automatic list of all the links that come from a conference, right? But I really want to know what people said about that link. So like the text that's right before or after the link. And so this is probably where like we would have to combine Bentley's tool with the the like um yeah with the link chainsaw is like have like not taking away the original context of where that link was created um now when you're copying from the zoom chat the the uh, initial place where it's being created is temporary so all you need to do is have the text but i think when you're taking it from like a Mattermost channel or a Discord. And so this is where I would love to do an experiment with the OGM calls because they use something that's not temporary, Mattermost, for the chat. If we can set it up where it pulls the message in, but also it then has a link to the place in the Mattermost where it was discussed. So if okay. somebody comes across a link like from like a year ago, they can then click uh, and have a backlink to the place in the Mattermost where the chat is. And I think all we would need to do is have like, like make that text string into like, uh, actually with the Mattermost API, it wouldn't even be that hard. I don't think. It, it turns out OGM has has collapsed back into uh, Zoom. What's that? Zoom um, it, it, we're not oh. using Mattermost anymore, we use Zoom chat. Well, maybe we can give it one last hurrah with this uh, <laughs> new new idea. But yeah. Well, the the other so um, I don't I don't know how how persistent this one wiki per call thing would be, but um, but another thing to stick into this wiki is the the Zoom chat, and and you could link back and forth from you know here's here's where the topic of of Thor came up, and you know here's the link in the chat and you could also permalink from trove into the, the chat there so maybe maybe we'll have persistent zoom chat up on the web at some point i i can imagine that yeah i haven't i i think i would need some like serious mm, guidance in terms of like i haven't put any like actual uh zoom like whole zoom chats displayed on any web pages of events in trove because i feel like it would be possible for google to crawl it and then like display those chats on google because i saw that i put like i think notes in of like i think i copied and pasted a zoom chat of like the press conference into like the notes page and I was searching for something on Google and my Trove event came up and I was like, what? <laughs> like, cause it, like, I think it had someone's name in it and their name was apparently in the, in the chat that I posted on the event page. And I was like, okay, wait, hold on. How is it being like indexed? <laughs> I was like. <laughs> so I, um, for OGM calls, that's okay, right? I, a lot of Zoom chats, you wouldn't want Google indexing, but um, how do, do we feel like Zoom, uh, OGM Zoom chats shouldn't be on the web or? I'm going to put it on the web. <laughs> uh, the other thing I have to do is figure out how to do um, uh, in massive wiki yet or, or massive wiki builder doesn't make uh, links to paragraphs, um, which not for anybody here, but for the record, I guess, um, uh, Eugene Kim used to do uh, some and 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 um, Chris Stand, I guess, uh, used to do purple numbers. Um, they they call them um, paragraph per paragraph uh, links. Well, even if you do it uh, like a static site where you generate HTML, you can't link to. Oh, you you totally can. It's just um, 
uh, Massive Wiki Builder doesn't do it yet. It would be really easy for Massive Wiki Builder to do it. Oh, okay. there, there's a there's a weird thing where I think a purple number was a promise that it would always be a permalink to that paragraph, even if the paragraph shifted around on the page. So that's a whole nother thing. But high performance addressability, thanks. Um, Wendy? So I keep raising and lowering my hands because these thoughts are popping in and then they're less relevant as the conversation moves on. But basically, first, I just want to say thanks, Pete, because the work that you're doing is is really great. And, and um, I, I particularly resonated with the struggle of, you know, does everything go on one page or how much do we break it up? And I, I hear in that the wisdom that you're applying to break it up enough, but not too much, right? Like that, yeah. right? So that there's, there's unique chunks of information that get broken up and linked back rather than embedded in the same document. I love that because yeah. for all the reasons that we've been just talking about and that those chunks then are available to be connected to yet other things when they get referenced somewhere else. Um, I think that's ideal um, from, from my perspective in thinking about usability. Um, and then being able to map it too, right? If everything's embedded in chat streams, right? It's one thing to reference a chat stream like we were just talking about and say, oh, you could go see what this conversation is about. I'm totally cool with that. But if every concept is always embedded in the video, in the document, in the, it makes it very hard to create some sense out of it. And so yep. the way you're breaking it up, I think is, is beautiful, thank you. And I'm super excited to see how the visual piece of that starts to come together. Thank you. And if, yeah. and if there's a way I can help, let me know. Thanks, I, I will. Yeah. Um, let, me, let me share um, the screen again real quick to convey a thought, which is, it's one of those things where um, uh, I guess one of my favorite sayings is never mistake a clear view for a short distance, um, which comes from the West where you can see a mountain, you know, 10 miles away. <laughs> it doesn't mean that it's close. You can just see it. Um, so you think of a call, you think of an OGM call, you know, if, if, I, if I was pressed to, to say what this call was about, it's like, well, we wandered around a little bit trying to talking about choosing a topic and then we kind of emerged into a topic which was how do we how do we tell the new story um, by the way Wendy I'm, I'm looking I'm looking forward one of the things that has been driving me forward on this this particular call is the fact that Wendy said some beautiful things um, further down in, in the in the transcript and I'm, I'm waiting to unwrap those like a little present like oh my god thank you you know this is uh, Wendy encapsulated some really good stuff, and I'm waiting to get to that. That um, is super sweet of you. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, you know, it's like okay, the call was about choosing the topic, and then talking about the new story and narrativizing and breaking up the hero's journey and uh, our our cultural fascination with single combat heroes as the as the important bits into. Um, uh, our collective heroicism, uh, being heroes collectively instead of having single heroes. So that would be the way I would summarize the call, right? But I was, I was surprised. I'm, I mean, I, I wasn't surprised that I was surprised, but I was surprised getting through, you know, like probably 20% of, of the work of maybe 25 of no, 20 of getting, you know, mapping what was in that call. And it's like, there's a lot of stuff here. You know, this was a call that wandered all over the place. which is part of the reason it was fun, but you know, it's like primacy of money is in there. And this is, this is a, a phrase that I, I built out of a couple things that people said in a couple different places. Um, uh, this one, uh, these words came up, but they were kind of in different places, you know, um, but there's, there's some relationship between those. So I guess I've done a, a tiny bit of sense making um, around, um, you know, putting some things that you weren't obvious when the call happened or they came by, they came and went super fast, but you can kind of see the call talked about them and, and you know, 
reflecting on them, even if they're small topics, it's still an important topic in, in you know, the history of the call and, and the history of the series of the calls over and over. So here's the planning and plans and stories in the new story. That's what I would have said the call is about. But you know, here's a bunch of other stuff that, that the call is about. And you know, and there's a ton of books and some of these, somebody somebody would mention them super fast. Um, uh, and you know, um, going back and, and figuring out what somebody said or who they were talking about um and pulling this out you know this is something after an ogm call i think i've got about half the people that we talked about so, so far do you mind if i just interject for a second a little please. vision i have yeah, for this please. okay so in my mind right if there was a it, visual mapping imagine a visual mapping mapping of this right and then some ai or coding that allowed the nodes to change color size shape something right to indicate how many connections they had mm -hmm. so that you could easily and then but then the resource is kind of what vincent was saying the resources end up getting tied back by topic or by person who said it right like they all have those connections and so you quickly see if you say filter by the date of the of the conversation or whatever you quickly see which things took prominence because they'll stand out with the most connections instead of all having equal play, visual play on the screen. Yep. So that's the kind of stuff I start to get excited about that and, totally is not capable yet. <laughs> and the, um, I totally agree. And, and the converse, um, what, got, what got mentioned but not dug into? I was, I was surprised. Um, Jerry brought up the metaverse, um, which I've had a back, background conversation with a few people. Um, uh, this is I, this is actually a really important thing. Um, uh, I can't edit. Oh, there you go. Um, this is actually a really important thing that that a bunch of us need to be talking about um, because Facebook is doing a, a really interesting move here, um, uh, spending billions of dollars and, and reorienting towards the metaverse. And and I, I guess as an aside, now that I've mentioned it. Um, uh, it's it's either a stupid thing that they're doing because the metaverse to me doesn't doesn't seem as interesting as they think it is, um, or um, I worry that it's a a, a head fake um, that they're focusing externally everything towards. Oh my God, there's this bright shiny thing. We're going towards the metaverse, and they're doing something else. Um, uh, the way I, I I told this to I think Jerry and 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 uh, Jordan Sukut. Metaverse is, you know, it's interesting and stuff. We've been talking about it for 20 or 30 years. It's like, it's it's going to, um, even Zuckerberg says, it's kind of like, you know, we went from computers to smartphones. It's kind of like going from smartphones to metaverse. You know, it's a, it's a paradigm shift, but it's not like, it's not like, oh my God, it's the best thing, you know? And at the same time, there is an, oh my God, there's a world changing thing that's gonna happen called AI, right? AI is going to be a big deal. Um, whether we like it or not, and how how it comes about is, you know, that we're we're doing initial boundary conditions right now that are going to change the world in a hundred years. Um, and if we if we and and if we did that well, we might have a better hundred year future. If we did that poorly, we might have a really lousy hundred year future. Um, Facebook has enough money and enough technology people and stuff like that to be into the into AI. I worry um, that. Metaverse is like the bright shiny thing, and you know there's some uh, like five or ten underground AI labs in Facebook that are getting a billion dollars each, that are like hardcore going into, you know, Facebook did this kind of weird stuff with AI, and they they tripped over, you know, they screwed up politics and societies and stuff like that by misapplication of AI. What if they did that more intentionally? What if they took more resources and and dug into that, and you know, even if they have good intention, I'm not. I don't. I'm not convinced that as an organization they're good at at doing good things for society, even with good intentions. It worries the heck out of me that we're not talking about metaverse. Um. Anyway, back to so popping up uh, on a couple levels. I, I don't think they have good intentions. I think we have a very clear libertarian agenda. Yeah, libertarian in like the worst. <laughs> sense of the word <laughs> yes um so i i also agree with that completely i think this is a huge topic 
that we need to be talking about. And I agree that. So Jerry oh, mentioned yeah. this. And then yeah. I said, this is an important thing, but maybe it's not the topic we want to talk about today. It wasn't until later, like reviewing the call, Grace said the same thing. Metaverse is my, you know, the topic I would pick out of this. So, so back to, you know, there's, there's the, um, Wendy, I, I love the idea of visualizing this and, and thank you for offering to help if we get to the point where it's useful to visualize this. I, I actually, I almost started this in Scapel instead of uh, Obsidian, but um, I can do more faster with Obsidian, oddly enough. And then, and then from, there's enough data here that you can turn it pretty easily into at least a automatic, you know, graph visualization. So yeah, that makes total sense to me. Yeah, completely. I would not um, have started this level of detail with Scapel either. <laughs> I almost did. I think it would have worked. Um, I wouldn't have got, been able to get this far as Text, well. text, text, dot, dot rules. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, dot. Um, anyway, so this is a anti-popular topic that, you know, you, you would be able to see what, what were the things that popped up and, and started to emerge but didn't actually, you know, expand. And so you'd see those too. Um, And, and actually, can I add, I think we actually, in some ways, did talk about the metaverse yesterday. Because awesome. we were just talking about the, the, we ended up talking about, I'm sorry, I'm walking around. Um, we did end up talking about it in the sense that the story we want to create is, yeah. would be the engine that would feed how we develop the AI. Yeah. Right? We were yeah. talking about the positive side of it instead of. The negative, yeah. that's all. Yeah. The, the reason I worry it's a head fake, by the way, um, is because they're so gung ho about meta. Um, and it's so, like, you know, like focused. It, it feels like a PR push to me. It doesn't feel like. Well, the timing of the PR push just after the, um, I'm sure it was in, in the works, no, yeah. don't, don't get me wrong, yeah. but I think they were very happy to unveil it now uh, with the Facebook papers. I think it was, it's a great way yeah. to That's get, true too. Yeah. Shift, the, shift the discussion, shift the conversation. Yeah. Yes, distraction. <laughs> and I mean, yeah. it's, it sounds silly to say, oh yeah, uh, Facebook's getting a bad name. Let's just change the name. I, said, oh, I heard somebody say they changed the only thing they didn't need to change about what they were doing. It's a good way to put it. But, uh, you know, the worst thing is that it'll probably work. Yeah, it'll work. Yeah, I read a really good article, um, which I posted in the Flotilla about um, the reason they changed their name. And yeah, it's like... Um, it's a very common tactic that's been used time and time again to like, oh, be, we're beyond petroleum now after we just had this giant oil spill, like really? Yeah. <laughs> and then don't change anything. So I, I don't, I think it's gonna be a long time. Like the other thing that's interesting to me is like how I see Facebook, it hasn't like the fundamental thing that you do on Facebook has barely changed. Like they've yeah. added a lot of like random little features but like their core product is like, has not really innovated much. Um, and it's so funny that they're like pointing to this, like, oh my gosh, we're gonna be the meta. And it's like, we have this like 15, 20 year old feed of people posting. It's like, yep. there's such a huge disconnect that it's almost ironically like funny. <laughs> Tra tragically uh, funny. Uh, I don't know who raised first, I will go. One thing that worries me, is we often speak, Jack and I, about the social life of claims or the social life of, do of, of documents. But social life of claims, I think, describes it well. And like, has this claim been refuted elsewhere and so on? And I think that Facebook is extremely conscious of the fact that claims as, as Jack and I keep saying, have both a social life and an epistemic life, like the truth. Uh, and I think that right now they're, they've been trying to, they're trying to create the network for the epistemic 
uh, network and basically control truth. They are tr controlling so, uh, what what part of your social network you see. Now they're going to want to control what part of the truth you see. It's I think it's at that level. With with uh, what they think is good intention. No comment. <laughs> I'm not sure they even care. <laughs> I, I don't know. No, I, I I'm sure they believe it's. Few people believe themselves to be evil, but I'm not sure. I, uh, okay, let me put it this way. I think a lot of people think who are not into good think, oh, but we're beyond good and evil. And I'm afraid they're at that stage. Yeah. Go for it, Michael. Yeah, I, I was just going to say I, the, the thing that I almost feel is worst about this is this is as if BP had renamed itself um, alternative energy sources. You know, it, they've, they've co-opted a generic term that we need to use and they're going to be the ones who are defining what a metaverse is in too much of the public eye. And, and also just sowing confusion just about what, um, you know, it's, uh, or, or if they had named their, you know, if they had named Libra crypto, you know, or changed the name of the company to crypto or, or blockchain, yeah. you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's such a, a power grab in a sort of big footing, you know, we're the ones who own this, um, that, whatever they're actually doing is almost beside the point um that that's that's what yeah that's yeah. Me about it. yeah i was in a conversation this morning where the word meta came up a few times and the word metaverse came up a few times and then and they didn't know about it and i was like guys you can't use that word anymore and they're like what are you <laughs> talking about and then i became the bearer of bad news and everyone flipped out <laughs> and i was like yeah <laughs> I have to say, I mean, I used to work at Time Incorporated, and one of the, the realizations that they had had over the years was that naming, you know, br ma making brands out of the words time, life, people, money was, you know, th there were conversations where people we're saying, I mean, certainly within the company, but even in the industry and even in, among the public, wait, do you mean people, the magazine or people, lowercase p, you know, and, and it, it has its bad sides because it, it makes it hard to really brand in certain ways and to copyright certain things, but it's a great way to, to bigfoot your way into something that you don't really have the right to. Well put. Just meant to be lowering my hand and <laughs> hit the wrong thing. <laughs> not not uh, yet me. <laughs> no, no, but no, no, I, I think I, moment of silence, it's sobering for us all, but well, we'll have to uh, either fight for the name or fight for other names, right? But yeah, it, it, it's going to be difficult because meta, like I keep speaking about meta this, meta that, I mean, today I was speaking about the meta model <laughs> in my earlier call, obviously not the Facebook meta model. <laughs> I think we should get uh, Lewis of Stature to prior, file a prior claim. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious actually if he's reacted or will. I would really love it if somebody sued that name off of them. That would be... That would be great. <laughs> they should they shouldn't have it. 
and it's 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 so much less generic than alphabet was you know nobody could accuse google of trying to like own letter forms it, you know it's a different thing but this or apple of owning fruit yeah. that is too specific Oh God, Apple was contentious when it went into the music arena. <laughs> but that's not a story. Nope, not good, not healthy. What should we talk about next call? Should we, is it worth setting some intention now or? I think it may be, you know, we, we did have a few good conversations about um, sharing data objects. And I'd like to see some of those on, even if it's not in the hyper knowledge paradigm, how do we name and delimit, you know, delimit and boundaries around data objects still sounds like a useful topic. <laughs> Um, I actually set up a hack of I'm going to post it. There's not much on it now, but I can take some notes. Okay, folks. I would like to, the next meeting maybe, yeah, um, finish the conversation we started about like having a, um, like an up-to-date list of like all the different things that are currently being discussed, worked on, open action items, open topic discussions. That to me, I, I feel like coming into these calls, I, I need that to like reground myself sometimes, especially the timing, because I have a meeting right before this. I don't really have much time to like prepare. Um, and also, I don't know if we have time during this call, but I have an update at some point um, I made a um, working Zapier integration with both Google Hangouts and Zoom, where the videos, the recording from your Meet Hangout or the recording from your Zoom automatically get saved to a Google Drive folder. And then um, if you add a description, like this was a great video um, in, into that like Google Drive, um, a document, the video, it'll automatically upload it to YouTube. Um, and I could have it just auto upload to YouTube, but I wanted to make a, a little step of like, you know, add a description that way when it adds, it adds to that description. And then, um, so I made that as a, like a Zapier's app and I also like published it. So like anyone else can copy that if they want to set it up with like their personal um, YouTube account and wherever they store their files, it could be locally, it doesn't have to be, um, Google Drive just has to be something that syncs, I think. But um, yeah, I could talk. I, yeah, I think that's a, an exciting update. Uh, I have that working right now. Um, so if anyone wants to know about how to set it up, I'd love to chat. Um, I'm, I'm interested in that. I'm working on something similar for Jerry for Weave the World. And then um, Wendy Elford and, and David Bobo and I are doing some of that stuff too. Um, similarly, um, uh, I want to move those efforts off of Google Drive and off of Dropbox to something else. And so I'm looking at uh, SyncThing and NextCloud and a few others, C-File and stuff like that. Well, we just got it working. <laughs> I, I feel a similar sentiment where I'm like, I really want to be off Google Drive, but also they just made things so much better recently um, that it's like really hard to resist. Um, and the other really interesting thing that Google did, um, Pete, could you make me co-host for a second? So let's see. Um, Okay, so basically in Google, 
drive. I was blown away by this because this is like, if you hit the at key, it basically lets you tag different data objects. So like across the whole Google suite, which is like exactly what Trove is doing. And I'm like, wow, okay, is this coming mainstream now? Um, so you can tag like people, um, templates, uh, like files, um, and you can even do like events. So like I had like an event in my calendar and then that event showed up. So like in a Google doc, I could like tag an event that's on my Google calendar. Um, yeah. I think I don't have any events on here because I just created this new Google account for Trove, but um, it lets you like link things up, which is really interesting. I don't know what it actually does with that, but I guess it'll let you, uh, okay, yeah. So it like pops up like their card, you can like email, schedule a meeting um, or open like a detailed view. And I assume the same thing would work with like a file or an event, for example. So like it's like a Google sheet. Yeah, and then you could like have a preview of it. So I think this is like kind of a game changer, honestly, about Google. And like, I, I don't think Nextcloud or they're probably 10 years away from this. Yep, that's real sweet. Um, random tangentially. Uh... In their grip and <laughs> all your information. <laughs> um, I found a, a pretty good clone of Airtable, actually. Um, it's called uh, C Table. Um, and it's it's not going to, I mean, uh, it's not for for you, Vincent. Um, you're, you know, you're power using Airtable in a way that I'm sure Ctable is not going to support for a while. But for the simple stuff that you do in free Airtable, it's very similar to Airtable and it, and it seems to work well. So I'm going to dig into it a little bit more and then talk about it. But it's uh, mostly open source, not completely. And um, you can self-host self it for free forever. So if you can self-host it, what's not open source? Um, it ships. Uh, right now, they're shipping it in a Docker container, um, yeah. and I don't know how that's... they're going to obfuscate the, the. Or actually, maybe they, the the part that's not the part that's proprietary is got something to do with um, I don't know collaboration or or something, and so. Okay. Amazing. Uh... There's amazing evolution in the uh, CRDT uh, OT space right now. Yeah, uh, it's quite fascinating. There's still a lot of development happening. We haven't seen half of what these technologies can do. Yeah. Okay, folks. Uh, I stayed up late for today's meeting, so I'm tired. Thanks for uh, coming, Mark Antoine. Um, everybody else okay if we fold the tent up and I can get back to my, my tilting windmills? I'm good, oh. thanks. And I liked the suggested topics too that other people had for the next meeting. Thank yeah, you. thanks. Okay, we'll see you around. Take care. See y'all. Thanks. Bye.